Earlier this year, the Royal Agricultural College in Cirencester hosted the Counselling and Psychotherapy Central Awarding Body's first UK conference. The theme was counselling training, the way ahead. For the delegates who attended, the day started with a keynote speech by integrative body psychotherapist Michael Saw. Talking about paradigms is an abstract business. It's abstract, often intellectual. Um, and because we think of paradigms as kind of abstract belief systems. But that's when we think about them in the terms of other disciplines. If we think about them in our terms, we can approach paradigm clashes psychologically. So then there are not only philosophical, abstract, intellectual or scientific issues. They are not really only about the truth of certain beliefs or not. They are also based on emotional conflicts. Yeah? There, is, there are emotional conflicts in paradigm clashes. Um, and many paradigm clashes, for example, between the medical model and counseling in you know, the relationship, um, they are not resolvable on an intellectual or mental level, but the clash between those paradigms can be handled and inhabited differently um, if we approach it psychologically. Yeah? And we are experts at working with such splits emotionally. After the speech, delegates split up into groups to attend the various workshops on offer. These included a workshop by Duncan Lawrence on working with diversity in the counselling training context. That, um, a racist is a person who hates black people, blue people, polka dotted, backsided people, and they actually make life for you hard for you covertly and overtly. Okay? A person who's a non-racist might say, well, actually, I have polka dotted friends. I even go out to a, to, to, to a meal sometime with a square head guy. But that same non-racist who's got to describe himself as non-racist, if they heard something sexist, I'm sorry, if they, if they seen something racist or seen something that was discriminatory toward a person of color, they wouldn't actually do something about it. That a person who has an anti-racist approach, which counseling training, if you're part of the CPCAB at least, you say you are, anti-racist training, where if you can think of the non-racist as being on the fence. I'm sorry, non-racist being on the fence. An anti-racist steps off the fence and says, nope, this is wrong. You know, they, they register it in their head, they register it in their heart, and they actually try to do something constructively about it. I'm not saying that they actually go, up, go out and try to change the world on their own, because in reality, people will shut you down. People will stop listening. But to actually at least work with your line manager, and to gain some support to actually change the situation. Also taking place that morning was a workshop on innovative ways to embody the therapeutic encounter by keynote speaker Michael Soth. As a practitioner, you can hide behind your role as well as bring, make the role conducive to the space. In the same way a tutor can hide behind the role, you can structure everything to death because you know your material, and you just go through it. Um, or you can bring all your expertise and knowledge to bear on the tension between structured space and unstructured space. So I'm set up now as the key speaker anyway. I could just talk you to death now, couldn't I? I could just talk for the next hour and you would be lapping it up and I could be spoon feeding you and then you go home and then you have learned next to nothing. After the morning's activities, lunch was served and delegates took the opportunity to reflect on what they had learned in the workshops and caught up with colleagues from other parts of the UK. With their energy replenished, they set off to attend some more workshops, including a workshop about mandalas by Jan Moisa. Mandalas, which are usually a circle <coughs> with an image inside, um, are often used for meditation. And the circle, if you like, represents ourselves. Now, I'm not going to invite you to just immediately do that, to, to go into doing it, but, um, but that's the basic essence of it, that the mandala reveals, um, reveals ourselves. In other words, the ultimate self, um, away from the hassle of our chattering mind, our judging mind, the I should mind. Meanwhile, Francis Cullen and Nick Pamphlet were approaching the management of difficult group dynamics in a playful, 
and even musical way. My group, your group, knowing where to start. My group, your group, greater than its parts. My group, your group, like a family tree. More than me, me, me. Transference, projection, and therapy. But does this group have empathy? Working with difference and emotional pain. Is it us? Or the tutors to blame? Who said being in groups is fun? Who said being in groups is fun? Won't somebody speak? My brain's gone numb. Won't somebody speak? My bum's gone numb. Once the afternoon's workshops were over, delegates came together in the main lecture theatre where the UK Council for Psychotherapies, Jenny McNamara, talked about new developments in the organisation, including the requirements for new registrants on the UKCP's Psychotherapeutic Counselling Section Register. To graduate to the level where they can register with UKCP, so some of this will happen post-qualification, um, they ha the student has to have 450 hours of skills and theory during their training, 100 hours of supervised client work pre-qualification during the training, supervised at a ratio of 1 to 6. They have to have personal therapy for the duration of training, 35 hours a year, that's a minimum of 105 hours over the three years. And post-qualification, they must have completed a minimum of 450 hours of supervised client work, again at a ratio of 1 to 6. After the UKCP's presentation came a discussion about the effects of statutory regulation. I think for those of us that are practicing now, statutory regulation through the HPC would have little impact on how we're doing things at the moment. The concern I have is what happens in the future as the HPC takes more control and more interest in the trainings and what happens as the medical model influence impinges more and more on things like uh, having to do consulting with carers, having to uh, consult with other, other professionals and so on, records keeping, um, and there's, there's a whole series of these things that, that we're going to be negotiating very, very closely when the professional liaison group is, is formed. Why, why is state regulation problematic? Let's, let's move on and look at two of its key mantras. As I see them as mantras, we're in the one hand. Client protection and the inevitability of state regulation or statutory regulation. State regulation is what we, what's at hand. See, for I, my background's in group dynamics and, gr and group work. And from my, that perspective, these are trance inductions. Yeah? They're intended to disallow discrimination and foreclose other options. That's what trance, how you put people in a trance, yes? You know, you narrow, you narrow the focus. I think uh, we know that uh, in our current free market society, uh, many people are left unprotected by the market forces uh, and that we therefore have in our societies and in Britain in particular which is where we're talking about uh, huge inequalities and they are growing uh, particularly in health and mental health uh, but also quite objectively we have higher levels of poverty and child poverty than ever before so there is clearly something that isn't working if you leave the field to itself. After a long day's learning, delegates enjoyed some cold drinks and shared their views on the conference. I'm so happy I'm here today. I now know why I'm connected with CPCAB, because I love it. And uh, everything that happened today, all the uh, sessions, I really enjoyed it. It's um, good to network with other professionals with similar concerns and uh, here's some up-to-date information. The highlight for me was actually the group looking at uh, working with difficult group dynamics because it, there, was, there was just so much in there and it, it was really good fun, it was, it was quite low-key. Yeah, People have really wanted to uh, interact and be part of what's been going on rather than just sitting there and 
um, uh, and taking it as though it was a lecture. You know, people want to be included in stuff, and that's really the excitement of today, I think, being included and involved in what's been going on. It's been a brilliant opportunity for networking. It's been a chance for us to get together and ask questions that we definitely wouldn't have been able to ask if we hadn't got here together with other professionals. And it keeps us energised and keeps us sane, and it's been brilliant.